Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 12. So yeah, this episode's a little bit late compared to when I normally release videos, um, but that's because I had a guest over, as I mentioned last uh, last video, I had a guest over up, up, up until just this morning, so I got basically nothing done uh, in terms of electronics uh, all last week, this weekend, everything. So. Um, just got back from the lab today, so I figured that since I've got only just a little bit of time before the sun sets outside, and as we've discussed before, I kind of need the sun to do any work, uh, any work filming, uh, might as well, might as well get out a uh, quick, quick video. So, but before we get to what I want to talk about, which is some updated impressions for the Hot Air Rework Station, now that I've been using it for a little bit, I just want to mention a couple of other things. First, so first off, what I already mentioned, got nothing done last week. So other than just a little bit of soldering, I haven't actually made much progress on assembling more of my adapters since last video. Um, that said, I have, however, put all the all the source files up on GitHub, so you can find the the source the the KiCad project files um, for the PCB. You can find the firmware um, C, C code. Uh, you can find the uh, bootloader uh, assembly code. The bootloader is um, the tiny bootloader, by the way, uh, and which is like fairly available for anyone to use. So just the version that I'm using is just, well, the, the correct lines commented out and the right clock speeds put in, that's it. So you can find that. And you can find the Python um, the Python like, communication scripts that I've written uh, all up on GitHub. So you, all, all four of those are all different repositories and you can you can download as you see fit or you can you can watch you can watch them also because I, uh, even today I was I was making some changes and I pushed them out because of some limitations with Windows. So um, yeah, you can find those all on uh, you can find those all on GitHub. So um, the the other thing that kept me from doing any work last week was that I managed to completely mess up my uh, Ubuntu installation. So I do most of my work on on Linux, so I'm specifically using Ubuntu, and up until last week I was using 10.04. Uh, since pretty much since shortly after it originally came out in 2010. And since then, I've been installing slowly uh, additional PPAs. And if you don't know what a PPA is, don't worry about it. Uh, and 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 with the with the new library slowly being brought in from all these different repositories, I, I was slowly breaking more and more things uh, in my in my installation. But up until last week, it was all things that didn't really matter. It was things like, oh, M player doesn't work anymore, so now you have to use now you have to use VLC to view videos or. Oh, uh, this this one audio player doesn't work. Now you gotta use this other one instead. You know, it was all things that really at the end of the day didn't bother me too much. It was just a little annoying. But last week I managed to install something that uh, completely screwed over my network driver, so I couldn't connect. Couldn't connect to my uh, uh, my my network anymore. So I had to. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to fix that without the internet to then download new things and since I leave my laptop at the at my office in the lab I, uh, I, I was just like whatever let's just tomorrow when I go to work I'll download um, the latest beta for when I say work I mean you know the the university right um, I'll download the latest beta for the 12.04 go ahead and install it and which then took a couple nights of reinstalling because uh, it's beta, right? So I, I, I can't <laughs> can't hold it against them for not giving me, you know, the most stable thing after only beta one, right? Um, so that was uh, that was uh, part of the challenge with that. That was keeping me from doing some of the work. It was eating up some of the free time that I did have, then going in and reinstalling everything, redownloading everything. I, I of course I had all of my stuff backed up. I keep all of my project files always on on Dropbox. Anything that's like that I'm currently working on, whether it's like 
uh, university work, whether it's uh, lab work, whether it's my electronics work, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever, I keep that all in Dropbox anyways. And only after I'm done with it do I, uh, you know, zip it up and put it to more permanent storage. Um, but now, all that stuff is on GitHub also, so if Dropbox did fail for some reason, I'd still at least have all that. So, that's positive. Um, so yeah, so I still actually have to reinstall, which I'm going to do after this, uh, MP Lab X, so I can burn the bootloader to all these and start testing them. Because once I, once I get the bootloader on, uh, and then put the, uh, put the firmware on it, and everything does work, then I'll start, um, boxing everything up, mm, excuse me, boxing everything up for, uh, for sale. But, um, which should be this week, okay? So assuming that nothing goes wrong, everything should be within the next couple days. Um, would have been last week, again, but the combination of those two things kept me from, unfortunately, doing anything. So, oh well, right? Anyway, so time for some updated impressions of the uh, Hot Air Rework Station. So, since I got it, I've been using it a little bit. I used it once uh, to do actually all the surface mount parts on the very first adapter, just to see how all that would go, you know, uh, uh, like actually just um, put some solder on both pads for like, for, for a resistor, for example, right? Put some solder on both pads, uh, I guess more so than the, uh, than it came with, because I got them hot air, solder leveled, hassled, whatever you want to call it. Um, Put some more on both, and then hold the resistor, and then you know use the use the wand to try to reheat it, right? Um, so that worked all right, but then uh, but then after that, I, I started doing them in batches just with the iron. It was it was a little easier, despite the fact that my uh, despite the fact that the that the tip for my iron there, I didn't I didn't touch it. Don't worry, I didn't touch the end there. Um, Despite the fact that it's it's a little too big to actually fit in uh, for these uh, 0603 parts, uh, it works out. It works out pretty pretty well in the end. I'm, I'm getting used to it. I just need to remember to leave a little bit of extra space. But anyways, so for the rework station, what I am using it for though on a consistent basis is the crystals. Okay, so I'm going to just put just a little bit of extra, hold the crystal with my tweezers, and go at it. So. Some things that I found that I, did, that I didn't notice originally is that for the air, a lot of the lower numbers here, it starts at 1 and goes to 8, right? A lot of the no lower numbers, it doesn't actually do anything. The pump doesn't turn on, I haven't actually checked what the exact number is, but the pump doesn't actually turn on until about 4, I'd say, somewhere around there. Uh, at which point you can you can then hear the, the, uh, the uh, little pump turn on and then you'll actually get some air coming out. Prior to that, the only air that you'll feel is just the fact that it's it's hot, the rest of the room is not as hot, and you're going to have uh, air currents flowing because of that, right? You know, just ever so slightly. The other thing that uh, that's actually a little annoying, I find, is that when I'm using it, okay, so, so when it's just like this and I turn it on, okay, It'll, uh, it won't actually, like, it, it won't turn on the pump and st or, or, or the element or anything like that, right? It'll just stay in, like, a standby, and the little, uh, the little uh, display here will be on, whatever, and it'll show the temperature and whatnot. But it's, uh, it, won't, it won't actually turn on until you lift it out, and then you hear the pump turn on, and then you can see the temperature start to climb and whatnot. That's fine. I think the problem that I have is that and when I put it back down, the pump still stays on, and the heater still stays on, and everything like that. So you just sit here with this pump going going to town, and uh, you know, and, and you're not using it. I'd rather it actually go into standby. Now I know that the switches, that the little uh, the little um, uh, switch inside it to detect if you've actually if you had it inside the holder uh, is working. Okay. So I know that that's working, so I know that that's not the problem. I know that it can detect when it's in the thing, is what I'm saying. Um, but it doesn't seem to then go back into standby 
when I when I uh, when I put it back in the thing. The other thing that's a little bit of a pain is just how much how much power it does use um, when when even just on like a moderate temperature setting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure if I read the instructions, I could actually. <laughs> I'm sure if I read the instructions, yes, I'd see what the uh, what the power requirements are of it. But just just this with that little tiny fan there, uh, because I don't actually have a proper fume extractor, uh, and these two lights on, and one of them is a uh, one of those high efficiency curly bulbs. Um, you, the lights will, these two lamps will noticeably dim just a little bit when the heater turns on, and you can, you know that the heater's turning on because this little, this little light on the front flashes. Um, so, uh, how about we take a look at that, and you can see, you can see what I'm talking about. So let me just turn the power on for the, uh, for the power brick here, power strip, and you can see it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and turned on the power to the uh, power strip back there. And also, my camera ran out of batteries right when I was doing that because apparently I forgot to charge it. So I put it on the charger for a couple of minutes. Hopefully this will give me just enough to finish this off and then I can actually charge it properly for, for next time. Anyways, so let's take a look here. Do that slightly. And so we've got the hot air workstation. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So that's it just in just in standby there and I can adjust the the heater temperature and I'll show me what it will be set to but it's not actually drawing any current right now excuse me so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, leave it on uh, leave it on this high air here so you'll you can actually hear that it's turning on and then we'll stay on okay and then what I'll do is I'll lift it up show you that it's turning on put it back down you'll see that it doesn't turn back doesn't go into like standby or anything like that. And then I'll, I'll, I'll turn down the air so we can talk without it uh, being too loud. Okay, so here we go. So hopefully you can hear that. Should be able to, it's pretty loud. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, heating up pretty good. So there's the light flashing there. So you know, just like uh, the uh, lower soldering station, it'll uh, it'll flash as it uh, turns on and off the heating element, right? So if I had these lights on, you can see it flicker, right? So this is the less efficient light bulb, and I know this is messing up the color right now with the camera, but um, you can see it flickering just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that on the camera, but uh, it, it is syncing up with that. So let's just turn that light back off. So we'll go ahead now and put this down. It sounds a little different just because the weight of it is uh, uh, holding the thing down a little tighter on the one side. Um, but uh, yeah, see, it's not turning off. The, the heating element is still on. It's not cooling down. As you can see, the, uh, it's still flashing. So it is trying to maintain that temperature and the air. So let's turn down the air. And it, it turns off the air at about five and a half actually, so much higher than four. So I can turn this, I can diddle around with this here. And this is doing absolutely nothing. So that's actually about five and three quarters and then turns back on, the little LED turns on there. And it turns back off, so it's got a little bit of history, so it looks like, it turns back off at five and a half. That's it at max. It's pretty loud, actually. So there we go. So there we go. We uh, turned it back off. So just to show the other thing, and to show that the that the of course the switch does work, which is part of it because I well it's it's off when you turn it on and you lift it off and it, it turns on the first time, so you know that the switch is working. But another demonstration, I have it out, turn the power on, it's not on, right? Put it down. And I kind of put it down funny there, where, where it uh, bounced off of it. So we'll try that again. All right? Not, not in. Put it down. And then for some reason, it decides to go ahead and turn back on. But whatever. Anyways, the point is, is that the switch inside it does work. So uh, 
yeah, those are my updated impressions. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, well, what do you expect? You get what you pay for, right? <laughs> uh, it's uh, considerably cheaper than uh, like a, a Weller hot air rework station or anything like that. So, eh, but it does a job. I only use it just for uh, if I do something dumb and solder something on backwards, like one of the LEDs or whatnot, or to put those crystals on because they got no exposed pads. So I use it for very minimal things, and I just I just physically turn the switch off in between in between using it instead of just having it run and just pump all that uh, hot air out into the into my room for absolutely nothing because. Yeah, I don't really want to listen to the pump. <laughs> so, anyways, I did this because a lot of people have been searching for, um, searching on YouTube for this rework station and beginning a lot of hits on those on those earlier videos. So I thought maybe some people would be interested in a a little bit of an update, you know, after having used it for a bit. Anyways, I'm rambling now. So, anyways, be sure to check out the uh, the source files on GitHub. So again, you can find it at github.com slash galvent, okay? Just in case if I didn't say that earlier, but that's where it is. But you also find a link in the description below, okay? And to uh, signify the end of this episode, what I want you guys to do, if you made it all the way to the very end, I want you to leave a comment below, below the description, comment below. And I want you to use the word project somewhere in it, okay? So as you know, I'm working on my GPIB USB project, and it's almost done. It's basically done, to be honest. Um, and I want you guys to use the word project. So whether you like my project, you're working on your own project, what's your own project? Um, you know, you've got a you've got a school project. You know, whatever, right? I want you to use the word project below. So it lets me know that you made it all the way to the very end. And as usual, that makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside that people are actually watching my videos and uh, have things to say. So if you got anything else to add to, be free, be, uh, be free to add it. I've been emailing back and forth uh, a few YouTube commenters uh, that have had some feedback on some of my products and some, some of these people have had some really good suggestions and I'm going to um, probably talk about that another time and implement it in future builds. So anyways guys, see you next time.